my name is Giovanna Proença and today we're going to talk about Math Interpreter Problem Set 1 of CS15 Introduction to Programming with Python. So if you have any question about programming or about the career, schedule a free meeting with us, the link is in the description. And we would like to emphasize that this video solution is made for those who have already completed the assignment and want to have another view about the solution, all right? We do not support plagiarism. So basically in this problem, we're going to implement a program that prompts the user for an arithmetic expression and then calculates and outputs the result as a floating point value with one decimal place only. Assume that the user will be formatted as the user's out input will be formatted as x, y, and z with one space between x and y and one space between y and z, all right? Where x will be the integer, y will be the operator, and z it's another integer, all right? So basically this is our, our, our example. So we're gonna ask the user for expression, all right? Like we can see in here. And we're going to get, so the number one will be x plus will be y and z will be the number one. And then we're gonna print the result. All right, so to do this, I already created here a pseudocode, all right? So we basically need to get user input. We need to convert this input into the three variables, x, y, and z. Then we need to change the type of the variables x and z to flow, and we need to calculate the result, all right? So to start, let's understand how to use the input function. Basically, the function input allows us to ask questions to the user and the answer that the user typed in, we can store in a variable. For example, if we want to ask the name of the user, we can do username equals to input, what's your name? And it will be prompt in the terminal, the user can write his name. If the user types in Giovanna, the variable username will start Giovanna. Since the answer is stored in a variable, we can use this answer in our code. So now that we understood how we can do this, let's implement, all right? So I'm gonna call here, a ver I'm gonna create here a variable called expression, and I'm gonna use the input function. So here, we're gonna prompt this word expression and colon, all right? So here, expression, okay? So let's see if it's working so far. So if I do here, python interpreter.py and I put here one, two, one plus one, it give us nothing, but it's getting the, the information, all right? Now we need to convert this into variables. So how are we gonna do this? We're gonna use here in the hints, they kind of explained that we can use, but we're gonna use this split method, all right? So let's see how the split method works. The split method splits a string into a list. You can specify the separator and the default separator is any white space. Let's suppose we want to split our string txt, which holds the value hi everyone, into two. We can use the notation of creating two variables in the same line by doing x comma y. Then we assign x and y to the result of the split method. So we do x comma y equals true txt dot split parentheses. In this case, the split method will separate the string in where there is white space. In the end, x will hold the value high and y will hold the value everyone. Let's see another case. Let's suppose our txt variable holds the value apple comma banana. In this case, we use the split method again here, but instead of doing txt.split, we do txt.split and inside the parentheses we're gonna use quotation mark comma. So in this case we want to separate our string by comma. This means that we're going to split this string every time we have a comma. In the end, x will hold the value apple and y will hold the value banana. So now that we saw how the split function works, let's start implementing, all right? So in this case, we're gonna have three variables. So we can see here, we're gonna have the variables x, y, and z. So we can use this function here to split our variables, all right? So x will store the first integer and z will store the second integer, like they told us in here, okay? So in this case, we have to convert our variables x and y into floats, all right? Because the way that they, we receive Save them in here is like inputs okay so we're going to do the following we're gonna create a new variable called new x comma new y or we can just say new x equals true and we're gonna change the type of our variable so instead of being a string we're gonna do a float so when we do float parentheses we're changing the type of our string so our x now will become a float all right and we can do the same for new z equals to float 
and z in here all right so now that we converted the number the the input into numbers we're going to start calculating the result of depending on each operator that we receive as input okay so to do this we're going to use if and else conditions so let's understand how this works python if and else statements help coders control the flow of their programs an if and else python statement evaluates whether an expression is true or false if a condition is true, the if statement executes. Otherwise, the else statement executes. Let's suppose we want to check if a number is greater than 10. The number we want to check is starting the variable x. We can check if this number is greater than 10 by doing if x operator greater and the number 10. If this condition is true, we're going to print numbers greater than 10 only. Otherwise, if the condition is false, we're going to have our else statement. In the else, we're going to print any condition satisfied. Let's see one example in the code above. Let's suppose that x stores the value 7. The if condition won't be true because 7 is not greater than 10. Then we will skip the if block and go to the else, printing any condition satisfied. Let's do another example, making the variable x holding the value 15. In this case, the if condition will be true because 15 is greater than 10, and we will print numbers greater than 10 only. After that, we won't see the else condition because we already found our right condition. A Python elif statement checks for another condition if all preceding conditions are not met. They appear after a Python if statement and before an else statement. You can use as many elif statements as you want. Now that we've learned elif, let's improve the previous code with an elif statement. Let's add 